Hey everybody, welcome to another video. So I've been messing around with this book, Generating Sound and Organizing Time uh, by Graham Wakefield and Gregory Taylor uh, that just came out. There's some information here about it on Cycling74 website. Oh, and it looks like Max is 20% off. Um, but um, yeah, pro many of you probably saw this. Graham invented Gen actually, I think when he was a student. And uh, this book is really awesome. It's basically a bunch of gen abstractions uh, that are just super, super useful. And my guess is that a lot of the ideas in here are sort of the precursors uh, for the things that uh, that we saw coming out with these 8.3 objects. Um, and there's also just a lot of other stuff there that's that's not in native Mac. So I've been messing around with a lot of this stuff, and the book has a ton in it. But one thing I was playing with doing was um, just re-implementing some of the the patches that we've done in the in the prior videos. Uh, and one of them was this binary video, and I wanted to just go through this and show you how I did it, and give you a little bit of a window into uh, into the concepts here. Um, so if you haven't seen the binary video, um, you can go watch that. You don't have to go watch it now, but you're welcome to. The link's going to be right up here. Uh, but basically what we're doing is we're using uh, the binary number system to be able to work um, with patterns. Basically use binary numbers to convert them into patterns. Uh, so if I, if I manipulate the seed number here, you can see that I'm actually changing um, the pattern. Uh, and all I'm doing is just representing this number uh, in base as a base two number, and I can actually change the total length of that sequence if I want to. Right? And in this case, we're in uh, poly uh, rhythmic mode. There's a video on that too, of above. Uh, meaning, as we change this length of steps, we actually also change the. Uh, the subdivision. But at any rate, we can just really easily create these different beat, these different um, rhythms, different gate patterns by manipulating, just changing this one number. And in fact, you can kind of represent any pattern with just this one number, which is cool. And then we also have the ability to rotate the pattern. So positive numbers uh, shifted to the left negative numbers to the right, which to me actually is counterintuitive. Wouldn't be hard to reverse, but that's how it's working right now. Um, so let me open this up really quickly and talk about it, and then we'll rebuild it. OK, so in here you can see there's a bunch of these abstractions, go.ram to steps, go.bit.wrap, go.bit.rotate, etc. So these are all pretty uh, awesome little abstractions that Graham, I think Graham in particular has has written. I know Gregory's involved in this as well. Um, I think sort of helping put the book together. Um, and they are, they're all really well commented out. And then if you have the book, they're all explained uh, super, super clearly. Um, so right now we're working in Gen. In the last video, I think it was the last video, uh, we were working a little bit in, in Rainbow, which gave you some introduction into these concept of things like the param object. Um, so we're going to do basically the same thing, but we're going to work inside the gen patcher. Um, and you'll find that, you know, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's not super. Gen can be a little scary sometimes or a little intimid intimidating, but in this case, it, 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 won't, it won't be too bad. All right, so let's remake this thing. I'm going to just take this, move it off to the side. I'm going to delete, and we're going to start from scratch. So first I'm going to make a new gen patcher, and we'll say it, we'll call it binary beats 2. All right, and when I open it up, this is always what our default is going to be. And the, by the way, these abstractions are available with the book. Um, I don't know whether... I'm allowed to share the link with you um, if you don't haven't bought the book, but I just will say that these abstractions come with the book and they are available. Um, so I definitely recommend that. And um, there's tons of them in the book, but the ones that we're going to work with are the ones that are made for dealing with uh, binary numbers. So one in particular is go.bit.extract. 
And by the way, the GO stands for generating and organizing. If we open this up, we can see basically it's going to take an integer and then it's going to um, extract certain bits uh, from that. Um, so if we come back to our example over here, which is just a little visualizer I've created, I think I need a signal here. Or do I? Oh, I forget. Yes, I do, because I have a snapshot randomly in there. All right. There we go. Uh, it allows us basically to just pick out any range of those numbers. And the first inlet is going to be the, the integer that we're sampling. The second one is going to be the starting point, And then the third one is going to be the number of bits that we take. So this is the thing that's actually going to sit at the end of our chain here, or at least for this basic example in the beginning, it's going to sit at the end here. And then the we'll call it the seed, the integer that we actually use to um, to generate the pattern will will sit there in the um, we'll go into the first inlet and then the the uh, the bit the basically the position that we want to get is going to go into the second inlet. All right, and so if we just take that as a simple example, starting point, and we just pass a signal in there that is step value. Oh, and we need to set up, um, we need to set a seed. So we're going to create an adder UI to set the seed. And I just take some number. And then I start to walk along here. You can see it's actually starting to create this pattern, right? If I create an additional outlet here, and I just connect that to the seed and out to and feed that into our little visualizer. Then conveniently this number that we that we put here should, if I did it correctly, oh sorry, wrong place. This is the seed. Yep. Should change that. So we can actually see, well, okay, is this correct? Right. As I move along. Through the pattern. Okay. So we're, so we're kind of stepping through it. So first thing, obviously, probably we're going to want to do is be able to connect a phaser in here and have that drive the pattern. Um, and so what we want to do is basically get from a phaser into kind of a counter that's going to put out these index, uh, indices. And one object or abstraction that we can use to do that is go dot, uh, I think it's ramp to steps, I believe. And it needs us to tell it to the second inlet. Let's open up the patch. Yep. The second inlet is going to be the number of steps. So we'll use eight as a default. And let's just tell it that the it's going to between um, one and 64 are going to be the is going to be the range. And we're going to say that there's um, 64 steps so that those are our whole numbers. And then I think we just want the first outlet, which is going to give us the step number. So now if we pass inlet one into that abstraction, and then we pass a phaser into inlet one and get rid of this. And then we adjust our seed. Now the pattern's kind of driving itself. And what we're getting is just this gate pattern, right? Because it's just returning zero or one number each time. By the way, I'll zoom in on here like I am on the other one. Okay. Um, so one thing we might want to do is turn this into like a subdivided ramp. It has there's a, there's a, an abstraction for that so it's just, um, go dot ramp to uh, ramp to div I think it is let me check on my other one here ramp dot div and 
it's going to take into its second inlet, I believe, a ratio. And this one actually works a little bit like the rate object, where it wants um, the number to be synonymous with sort of the length of an individual division. So rather than feeding eight in here like we would with subdiv object in max, we're instead going to feed it uh, one over eight. So we'll send that into the second inlet. We'll send our ramp into the uh, into the first inlet, and then we're going to just multiply the output. Oops, no tilde required. We're going to multiply the output of the go dot bit extract by that ramp, and then that's going to give us a ramp on every um, every event in this sequence, right? Because we're just have a constant subdivided ramp that's divided by either a zero or a one is going to give us these these occasional ones okay so one other thing that we need to do is um, limit the length of this pattern so um, the depending on what integer we send in we could actually end up with a with a number that's much longer um, than eight steps uh, so we need to limit that, and I think the one that we use to do that is go.bit.wrap, uh, which I believe we just hook up like this. Yes, so what we're basically doing is saying, right, if we only wanted eight steps here, we should, this is one, two, three, you know, this is 16 or 12 or something of them, um, but if we only wanted eight, then we can tell it we only want eight. And so if I connect now this outlet to, to the go.bit.wrap, we should see, oops, I'm doing something wrong here. The output of the seed has to go into go.bit.wrap, which then has to go into the first inlet. I have this all wrong. There we go. Right, because the second inlet is actually the counter inlet. Um, and the first inlet is the seed value inlet. Okay, so let's try again. And so we should now see that we're getting, I believe, things limited to eight steps. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we are. Uh, and we can actually do this. So now we're going to get that attribute from the the our gen patcher, the number of steps, and it's going to actually pass it into our visualizer so that, yeah, there we go. Great. So now we're actually limiting that to eight steps. And then the final thing that I want to do is add like a rotation parameter. So I want to be able to kind of rotate that pattern around. So I'll say um, we'll create a parameter called rotate, um, and we'll have a range of negative, say, negative 63, oops, Default value is going to be zero, and the range is going to be negative 63 to 64. And then I believe there's a go.bit.rotate. And the length is L, the rotation is N. So the length is going to be eight again. The rotation is going to be, and that's the third inlet. The rotation is going to be second inlet. And the output of the go.bit.wrap is going to go into that go.bit.rotate, which is then going to go into our go.bit extract. And we'll just close all these. And then let's test that. So we can pull up the rotate parameter. Oh, and by the way, we need to make sure that our out2 is connected here so that we can actually monitor what the result is. And so now if I shift, I should see, yes, that it's shifting around. Cool. So that's basically it. Is there anything I did over here that we are missing? I don't believe so. Oh, one small thing is with this rotation, I wonder if it'll work actually. Do we even need to do that? So let's see what happens if I go to like 64. Yeah, it seems to work. So in this version, I actually had a little bit of work to try to wrap the rotation value or constrain the rotation value to 
the range of the number of steps that actually existed, but it doesn't even seem like that was actually necessary because it's handled very nicely inside um, inside the abstraction that Graham wrote. So pretty pretty straightforward, pretty cool. The one other thing that's happening inside of here that's worth showing, if I change this to output uh, outlet three, and I wanted to get triggers. There's a, a go dot uh, ramp to trig. Although I did notice that this one actually generates triggers on the beginning and the end of the ramp, which actually is not exactly what we want. We want one or the other. Um, and let's see, is it different from how the what object does it? Because what object kind of does the same thing, but I think it will work slightly differently. Let's see what happens. No, it does do the same thing. Yeah, so in this case, rather than use this abstraction, which I think is actually a fairly uh, sophisticated little patch, we may want to just go with the good old fashioned delta less than zero. Cool. And then we get, we always get it at the end. Cool. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.